Okay, folks. Thought they're gonna avoid it, but no, they leapt right over that line. Comment was made in the in the last video that Harley Nelson put it into his estate that nobody connected with Star Trek was able was allowed to touch the city and the edge of forever. Well, they touched it. They they flat out molested it this time. I think you know if you can if you listen carefully, you can hear Harlan screaming from the other side. Because yeah, they invoked and they even brought you grabbed a piece of Bart LaRue, you know, thing. Let's back up a bit here. Somehow we're still in the mirror universe. For some reason, it's not the bright idea to, you know, just be cute and turn the opening credits blue and upside down. Actually, the Discovery doesn't look half bad upside down. I should try that. Because when I set up, it doesn't work. Uh, but Philippa trying to enact a few changes here and there, you know, and Learn, you know, pass on some lessons that but every empire's learned. Really, even the Romans figured this out back then. Forget Genghis Khan, the Romans. You want to keep them in line, let them keep a few of their own beliefs, and they're less inclined to rebel. You know, and trying to you know drag Michael back to her side or whatever, and she thinks it works for a while, but apparently, no, she was playing a long game, fake anyway. And, Even to the point of killing Detmer, it's like, come on, it's the one character we actually kind of like. You know, but, but you get some badass, you know, Kelpians, because they, you know, they tell, tell Saru, though, whatever the hell, Maka, Macarena, whatever. That's not fatal, you'll live and you'll become a badass for it. And he comes, you know, and turns out it happened overnight. It's like, oh, okay, he comes in with a phaser rifle to the rescue and... I mean, it, it was fun watching Michael get thrown around and beat up and tossed in the agony booth and finally run through. That was, that was enjoyable, actually, because that character is so despicable. Even if it was the Mirror Universe version, you can just beat the living shit out. You know. And I was thinking the whole thing, it's like, even this character should know better. You get in Philippa Joujou, and I, you know, even you know, putting Michelle Yeoh uh, uh, aside from it, you get Philippa Joujou, who is a pretty accomplished fighter in her own right. You go right in her face with a phaser, you go to Hollywood, it's, you know, she is going to take that phaser and shove it up your ass, okay? Before you even know what's happening. So it's like, come on. Even this idiot, you know, Michael, should know better. But no, you gotta get, you know, some... This was cringe all, all through. You, you, could, you could tell Mary Wiseman was having real fun <laughs> with uh, Captain Kelly, as she always does. I mean, you know... Stick the old Michael in the agony booth, and just the way she sort of gleefully just hit the button. <laughs> Watch, ah! Hope we don't mind sleeping in there. <laughs> but then it's back to the snow thing. She's only been out for half a minute, and she's got three months of a debt. Oh yeah, sure, yeah, right, okay. And then the big reveal where they're what are you? And they go in the and suddenly Lieutenant Brass turns out. I am the Guardian of Forever, and you know the big Bart Larue voice, and the door disappears, and you get like a. In large version, it was like twice, at least twice the size of the original prop of the Guardian. Looking a little more wear for tear, and a little bit is more of a Stargate type look in there, instead of the smoke coming down and newsreel footage. And that is, of course, now where they officially broke the Star Trek universe, at least as far as their end of it goes. Because, like I said, you know, there was point out, you know, an Alexa confirmation of this, but apparently it was put in Harley Nelson's will. Do not let Star Trek touch sit in the edge because he had. There had been over the years, a lot of writers had wanted to revisit the Guardian and reuse it for all kinds of things, and he blocked them all the damn time. The, the only one that got through was Yesteryear by Dorothy Fontana, and that's because Harlan and Dorothy liked you know he liked Dorothy, he respected her, and she knew he was gonna. And the Guardian where there wasn't a big part of the story so much. But, it wasn't a big deal the way they did that. It was more of a, it was just a vehicle to get Spock back, and that was the main story. You know, that's what they want. Like people like that. But this one, again, is another case where I don't think they even watched the episode. And they also certainly know nothing about the history of this episode regarding Harlan Ellison and the rest of Star Trek. Because even then, you know, just the whole production thing, and it's like, you know, with the, 
when he found out that John D.F. Black had done the first rewrite. And Harlan's reaction was to fashion a little hangman's noose hanging just outside, because Gene Roddenberry's office, he had an outer office where the, where the secretary was, and then the inner office where Gene was, with the door. And Harlan fashioned a little hangman's noose, hang, had it hanging right outside the door. And so, open the door, point to the noose, tell me someone didn't touch my words! <laughs> yeah, Harlan Ellison, you do not rewrite Harlan Ellison. You do not touch a Harlan Ellison story without his express you know, blessing. Lest you invoke the, the fires of hell raining down upon your pointy little head. Even with him gone, I am sure he has put legal things in place. So yeah, I expect by Monday a lawsuit to be filed against Star Trek Discovery and CBS All, you know, All Access and Viacom CBS about them violating his script again. Because he really did, he still had a very deep connection to the original draft of the script. He wished the hell he could have brought, like, Trooper and other characters in there. And I think he also, because he had a tendency of people that, you know, wronged him in the past, going back to childhood bullies, and turn, using them as bullies and, you know, villains in his stories and giving them just dessert punishment. And that's why, you know, the guy Beckwith, that was some guy named Beckwith, you know, picked on him as a kid. And what did Harlan? What was Harlan's punishment for Beckwith in the end of his version of Sin Age Forever? To materialize over and over again throughout eternity in the heart of a son. Have that moment of absolute agony and then constantly be repairing all over and over again. Yeah. Can you say Harlan Ellison was a vindictive little bastard? Yeah. He copped to that for you know, Yes. Guilty. Proud of it. Don't touch my words. <laughs> and you know, and yeah, oh yeah, Jim Cameron found out because there were actually, I think, a couple of Carlin Ellison scripts. One, one of Twilight Zone, one of uh, Out of Limits. That kind of you know, it may have been unconscious by because you know Cameron's a big fan, so he probably saw this stuff as a kid and forgot all about it. But the, the storylines of Nestle Hand they kind of merged into the Terminator, and here comes Harlan Ellison, and that's why he's got a screen credit. In later versions, because originally I didn't have it, and then yeah. So, yeah, uh, I fully expect, it may not even make the news, but I do fully expect a lawsuit to be filed very quickly against the producers for actually going through and, and airing this story. As long as they didn't air it, they were probably fine, but once it hit air, that's it. Bring them down. Yeah. You know. You know, there's also the, and then on the nitpicky side, we should not accept because it totally screws up these guardians. This, you know, it says right there, I was made to function this way. I cannot change. And who the hell is going to try and fix this thing? Okay, the, the, the technology of that sucker is so far beyond anybody. I don't care if you're a thousand feet, you're still not going to be able to know the ink, barest workings of this thing. But the the way they did, it's like, oh, you just because they did, they didn't just alter the whole concept behind what, what the city or what the guardian there. They bent it over a barrel and Absolutely. they showed it all the tender mercies those hillbillies showed Ned Beatty in Deliverance. Okay, the only thing it didn't do is make it squeal like a pig. Okay, so. <laughs> And it's still not over. There's still another episode or two to go on this nonsense. But yes, the Trek apocalypse has now occurred. They have broken the universe. And any and all claims, oh, they they they, they made a yeah, they made a bad reference and they totally screwed it up. Okay. This is not a claim. This is not a claim to canon. Status. This is them saying once again, they'll, whether they know it or not, they think they're tying it to canon. They are refuting it because they're totally screwed it up. And like, and again, if it's true that Harlan had it in his will regarding the city, it's like you are don't I you have no idea the the hellfire you just unleashed upon yourselves, guys. Enjoy your contract, uh, Alex, because it's probably going to be your last. I mean, don't be you know. I'm assuming Clarice is probably still in development stages. You know. 
I mean, Harlan Ellison is still a big name in science fiction circles, and he's still, you know. And as many people as he sued over, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's got very good lawyers that are still looking out for his interests. But it's just dumb that, you know. There was a, a lot of cringe in here, and just when the final thing was, I am the guardian of forever. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sakes, they did it. They just dropped a continuity bomb on their foot, and they think they're clever for it. And tomorrow they're gonna finally gonna go out and you know find that uh, what was left of that. Well, they're they're there. There's still there's there's still a ship out there apparently because something's still sending them that signal, even though it's been 120 years. They can't make up their mind how many years it's been, but you know about 120 years, and there's still something alive out there. Oh, good God. You know, at this point, who cares? You know, because yeah, they have broken the universe. Congratulations, you morons! Okay, and I think for a change of pace, I'm gonna try something new. We'll we'll discuss blueprints, you know, later on, because <laughs> I need something different besides this idiocy. Uh, uh, yeah, first episode of the stand dropped, and a uh, quick review of that. It's not, it's not bad. They did a different approach of how to uh, uh, bring the story in. Because I think they did, they didn't want to just do a direct remake of the last miniseries. That would be boring. That would be so, like watching the remake of uh, Psycho. Well, that's just you know, they did this already. You know, it's like we want to see you know, James Marsden do an imitation of Gary Sinise. Okay. Yeah. And then on and down the line, you know, where you got the only thing is how is Whoopi Goldberg gonna play Mother Abigail? Well, yeah, she's got white dreads and looks talking old. I'm just relieved she don't, she's not doing a Miles Mabley impression. That would just kind of kill her. So, anyway. Before you get, yeah, are you still watching this crap? Yes, somebody has to take the pictures, okay? Someone's going to document the train wreck, so, you know, yep, this is what happened. This is where I screwed up. This is where, you know, you go here, 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 and, yeah. Yeah, I think next one is going to be, you know, something rather non-controversial, like which way the bridge faces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a simple question. Okay. Till then, PayPal, Patreon, subscribes, are especially Patreon right now, because a little bit of a full disclosure here, we're out of money. We are out of money. We are running down, running out of food rather quickly. The stupid food stamp card is down to like two seven, two dollars and seventy five cents. They were doing supplement payments afterwards, but I guess they figured they only rent to December, and we're not getting any more. And we're still, we're still working a few angles to try and get a waiver to get stick in here a little longer. Otherwise, we're really screwed. But uh, we got a, we got enough things in in the pipeline and trying to work out here. You know. Like, you know, a couple of our doctors trying to send notes to the VA. Because the thing, you know, again, just long story short, the agency we're working with, they're putting this up in here. It's telling, it's telling all the vets, unless you get a waiver, you know, unless you get a, a waiver or something from the VA saying we cannot physically or mentally go into a shelter, then everyone's out. Apparently, funding cuts or whatever. So we're trying to get the waiver, for one thing. And also, Working on other income, apparently I've been approved to become Steph's live-in health care giver or something or other. Which means, you know, I'll get some compensation. And they estimate, we haven't got any hard numbers there, but we have an estimate of just under five bucks an hour. Or five, you know, five bucks every 15 minutes, which translates to, you know, that's four, four, 20 bucks an hour. And we figure I'd probably spend about, you know, four or five hours a day doing this kind of thing. So that's about, you know. That's 30 hour. Well, because it's a seven day an hour thing, a seven day a week thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, comes to about 30 hours a week. About 20 bucks an hour. Hello! <laughs> Certainly enough to afford the nice little place we found on apartments.com on Union Wheat Ridge. That, you know, two bedroom, and it's cheaper than any apartment we've found. It's a little townhouse thing. I'm not going to give this location because I'm in somebody else's nature. But. <sighs> It would solve so many problems if we could just, you know, get past all these, what I see as, frankly, arbitrary time limits that cut us off in the knees every damn time. Go back to the videos. Every time we start to get something going, somebody comes in, you have to go now. It's like, what? <laughs> this is going to take a couple weeks. Now, you're, 
you know, like the whole thing started. We, you know, we had to the end of the week to get it, you know, to, to find a place. You know, in, in, lovely sister and her husband knew damn well you cannot find a place in, in any, even in better you know, situations in a, less than a week. <laughs> it takes a while just to apply and get approved and yada, 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 yada. It's like, no, 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 no. So this, you know, <sighs> let's just say I've learned to really detest arbitrary time you know, time limits. So, but anyway, that's where we're at right now. So hit the paper and the links are down below. PayPal especially. We need some cash right now to get just to get some damn food. Okay. <laughs> Cuz we're really starting to run out here. I thought I had some milk for a cup of tea last night. Nope, it's all curdled now. There <laughs> wasn't much left anyway, maybe down one. Yeah, we're talking, you know, some mac and cheese one to we've got a couple blocks of government cheese in there and frankly I'm still you know we've got some pork chops to frost and we'll get the cans of veggies we've been sitting there for a while but yeah the, the, the reserves are not going to last long at all we need to get some money we need to get food I'm not saying gas money because the Explorer of course is still dead and wherever we go we're going to have to drag it along behind us I'm pretty sure they're not going to let us camp out in the parking lot if they get with it so enough of that we're still working on that. We're, you know, so we got various things on the fire to keep it going, but we need a little infusion of funding to keep things going. And for some reason, it's, it's dried up lately. I'm, I'm a little mystified of my. Because it used to be, you know, I could, the Patreon was okay, and the cafe presence. You know, this is gonna, this is about the dovetail and discussion on the shutdowns and how they affect the economy and how everything goes down, even down to this level. It's like you know, what were reliable funding sources and how they're gone. <laughs> so give give generously give through hurts okay <laughs> we'll talk at you later <laughs>